Hello, this is Daniel. I'm a community organizer at Cyclodge. Cyclodge, this group building a platform for data science enclosure. This short video is a tiny snippet from a special meeting we had recently. It was March 22nd, and we had the first meeting of a new group, the real world data group, where, you know, individuals and groups and companies and, and various practitioners will share their experiences using closure for data and science. And in that space, we will try to create some common understanding and common practices in those fields. Sometimes we will share the recordings publicly, but most of the stuff is recorded and shared just internally in the group chat. So this tiny snippet is a presentation by Kyle Passarelli, sharing a little bit of Kyle's work experience. I hope you'll join us on our next sessions. See you. Hi again, everybody. So I'm Kyle Passarelli, and I'm a relative new newcomer to, to Clojure and uh, data also. So most of my work, I, I trained as a mechanical engineer, and then I did general software engineering most of my career. Uh, but um, I'm super, really fascinated by, by data and uh, by, by what's happening with AI uh, at the moment, like uh, all of us. And there's there, there are a couple of things that make me think that this there, there are some opportunities that are out, out there that are maybe maybe they're not the ones that everybody is is seeing, but that that are going to be really important in the next few years. And uh, I think one of, one of them is around data data cleaning and data preparation, because uh, so my my general feeling is that you know we're in the, in this AI hype bubble right now, and then when this is over, maybe maybe next year, maybe in two years. I, I'd be willing to bet that most companies will walk out of it and they won't exactly have a lot to, to show for it. It's not like it won't be transformative to their business right away. I mean, there's real value to the technology, but there, there are real challenges uh, for, for companies to use it uh, successfully. So, and, and I think that, that a big part of the, the issue here is data, data cleaning and data preparation, how to do, how to run uh, the, these things privately, how to run models privately. And uh, even though companies have been doing data preparation for analytics data warehousing, the, the data kind of prep cycle for uh, for AI is, is going to be different. It's uh, different and, un and unfamiliar. So I think that there's an opportunity there uh, that when, uh, when companies kind of wake up and find that uh, they're like, okay, we need to take one step back and, and clean our data. I think there's uh, that that's where I'm 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 posi positioning kind of myself and my new company to to sort of be there. You know, there's there's another parallel movement that I think kind of ties in to the first, which is uh, omni what I would call an omni channel. So it's also being batted around a lot lately. So if if your company talks to your to customers and uh, on uh, let's say WhatsApp and Instagram and and different different channels, and you're doing omni-channel, right? But I, I would also say that 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 this kind of multi multi-channel thing pops up all over in the enterprise. So their companies don't have a single trusted system of record anymore. They are doing HR in one cloud system. They're doing uh, ERP in another, CRM in another. That if you kind of think about it, that's kind of the same thing, right? So you're trying to run your business in par in parallel over many systems that you don't don't control. So it, so I feel like there's this is another kind of industry trend to, to watch for is how can we how can companies regain kind of the simplicity and control over their business even when it's kind of all spread out now. And um, and like a especially interesting area is so if a lot of this hinges on data prep, like how how do we, as an external consultant or external company, how how can we do this 
without having access to all your all, all your data. Like I've I've had previous experiences showing up um, in being in sales calls with companies and and sort of asking them nicely to turn over their <laughs> their data or and uh, it doesn't go well. Like the what typically happens is you you get kind of put into some very long six month process with the head of IT and nothing moves. Eventually you, you either run out of money or you know things move on. It does it's it's not it's not an easy one, right? So even if the industry is at a has these interesting kind of trends going on, I think this central question is cr critical for like doing something in the space. So I'm going to share with you more like a business kind of the business side, not so technical of what what we're doing since this is the real real world data uh, meeting. So what we're working on is simple private AI assisted data prep. So where we connect external data sources, and this is a kind of interesting wrinkle. We'll see if we can get this to work. So get a sample of data, but especially the schema data types. Um, of the, of that that data names, and then hallucinate a, a, a parallel universe version of that data, so that when we as analysts work with, uh, when our analysts work with that data, they're not they're not looking at the actual customer data, right? So this is a control that we're seeing might might help us kind of get in with uh, companies and avoid the sort of black hole of a we're not going to give you access to a, to a private data because it's private. Um, <laughs> that sort of chicken and the egg problem. So hallucinate a data, an entire data set with references, uh, you know, the same kind of referential structure, data types and columns and fields and so on. Um, work on that and then deploy with, the, obviously with the real data. It's a little bit like in uh, training versus test data set, that kind of idea. And, and in terms of, the uh, closure stuff that we're playing around with. Uh, we're using all the tech um, ML uh, stack tabletop. We really like it so far. I have been working with kind of less technical and kind of an, uh, Excel expert type analysts. And, and so far I've been able to kind of fool them into thinking that closure is just like a complicated Excel version of Excel, you know? so. Using you load up Cal, uh, Calva and, uh, and 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 then just run each cell as though it's you're running it in Excel. Like they, it kind of works. Like we've got some really good analysis uh, done with people who are definitely not they're not even programmers, but they're Excel users. They know something about data. They know how to uh, kind of look through it and clean it and so on. So the, what we are what we want to do is. Uh, see if we can scale this up in terms of a system that doesn't feel broken, where uh, an analyst connects using their REPL to a, to a dedicated machine, which we would call the lab. This dedica dedicated machine has access to data in uh, from the data sources, but in the, what we would call the hallucinated data <laughs> warehouse, the sort of AI hallucinated copy of the, uh, of the data. They would create the data cleaning tool, let's say, basically functions with transformations and, and, and checks, maybe schema checks. That still is not 100% is not clear. And then uh, we would deploy that. So to, to work with the, the kind of real production data. Um, and then um, hopefully we can do some, some stuff with, so treat NREPL as our public API to the lab. So that when, uh, when the analyst connects, we, we know that they've connected. We can uh, maybe hand over the credentials and do some stuff like that. I still haven't programmed the NREPL middleware, but that's kind of the idea. And uh, and then a site. So I do have a. So the 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 main role for for our site will be to kind of present everything that's in the, the all the action that's here. So it's so not a. a not a no notebook platform. There's nothing like. There's not not a lot of data entry uh, on the the kind of corporate website, but more, more like code stuff. And then that should present. You know, what data sets do I have? What notebooks do I have? We're a couple of months in. This is super early, and I'm also learning closure uh, as as I'm doing it. I 
it's a sort of in a sort of sabbatical kind of mode. Um, and then, uh, I mean, so far uh, until until kind of um, it's proven otherwise. I think we want to hitch our wagon to to closure and then just uh, see if 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 we can make make something work better than the kind of expensive SQL heavy tools that are out there that will lock everybody in. I don't think it, it needs to be that complicated. Maybe a data model is a function. Maybe a, a table is like a tablecloth or a tech, a tech ML data set. You know, how can we, if, what would be the closure kind of spin on this? Uh, because so far, like the REPL for, for, for data is, has been a real delight, at least for me. I'm stepping away from SQL and, and doing more in, in a real programming language in an interactive way, that's been amazing. And for, for analysts who are Excel users, uh, to work in more or less the same way, you know, they have a CSV file loaded up, just play play with it using the REPL until they get something. That's been really successful. There may be even easier to teach closure in that kind of limited, uh, that limited subset of closure. It might be even easier than, than teaching SQL, you know, uh, counterintuitively. So maybe there are a lot of like, un there's still many, many unknowns here, but this is kind of what we're, the state of, uh, of what we're doing in, February, in March uh, 2024. And I look forward to kind of picking the brains of <laughs> a lot of people in this in this group and, and continuing this conversation. I'm really excited about the group. So thanks.